Today's show is pre recorded. Y'all know what time it is. Y'all don't know y'all better act Like a million bucks, bucks, Now things in this cup. Mm-hmm. Y'all tell me who could it be but Steve Harvey? Oh, yeah. Everybody out there listening to me. Mm-hmm. Put your hands together for Steve Harvey. Put your hands together. Oh, oh, oh. You can shake me, please. Steve Harvey. Well, oh, oh, oh. 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 Good morning, everybody. You are listening to The Voice. Come on now. Dig me. One and only Steve Harvey. Man, oh, man. Got a radio show. I said yesterday I was trying to do something with it. And like I said, you know, the, the trying part is over. I'm, I'm actually doing something with it. Now, I told you that the only way to find your real purpose, your real mission in life, your real what for, the thing that you got to go get it, get after is you got to connect with God. You have to connect with him because as your creator, no one knows better what you were made for than your maker. I mean, that just, I mean, uh, man, it just make a lot of common sense, don't it? I mean, really, you know, you, you, people kill me with, with, with the lack of belief. I'm, listen to me. I don't really into explaining all that away. If that's how you feel, then go on and get to feeling how you feeling with it. But let me explain something to you. I just don't see how. What is this conscious that eats away at you from time to time? Where does the moral barometer come from that exists in your life? What makes you know the difference between right and wrong? Where did your conscious come from? What is your need to cry out from? What does the word Lord help me come from? Why, when you get in a in a dark place and you whisper Jesus, where did it come from, huh? What is that? You know, where do where do these promises come from that we make? These deals we cut that we make with a higher power. Why, why, when you're at your lowest moment, man, you 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 turn somewhere. Okay, enough of that. I've I've explained my side of it. I, and a matter of fact. God is really almost unexplainable to me. I want, I want, I want to share something with you about when you strike out to find your mission or how about when you strike out on your mission? Once you discover what your purpose is or let's, let's simplify it. What happens when you set a goal and you're ready to strike out on that goal? What happens when you set an ambition in front of you or put something in your sights that you want to attain, that you want to become successful at. What's the mindset that you have to develop? There are three things you must first ask. You must then believe and you must then receive. Now the receive part all these parts is, 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 is got a thing to it. You got to ask. You just got to ask for it. 
You know, you've heard the scripture before. You have not because you ask not. Why don't you ask? But then after you ask, here's the kick. You got to believe that it can happen for you. Stop looking at the success of other people and not thinking that that same success can happen for you. And I'm not saying that specific way. I'm just saying that, that a success can happen for you just like it can happen for somebody else. Why do you think it keeps happening to other people over and over? Because they ask and they believe. Now, here's the cold part. Receive it. Uh oh, uh oh. What you mean receive it? I asked for it. I believe in it. Why would I not want to receive it? Act like it. Act like it's already there. Behave as though you have it in your hands. Smile about it. Realize that man is just days away. And how many other days that is? If it's days away, it's just days away. We don't know if it's going to happen tomorrow, next week, in 30 days. We don't know if it's going to take a few years. But you got to receive it, though. You got to ask. You got to believe. And you got to receive it. You got to act as though it's there. Now, there's another part now to this about work. You know, don't please faith without works is dead. Don't think you're going to just ask for some believing and then go sit down and start watching TV. Come on now. Let's get real. Let's not leave out the, the other jewel. You got to work. But now here, here what I want you to know about when you strike out on that mission, that the journey that you strike out on to accomplish a goal or to set out on the mission, the journey, if you could understand this, it'll help you so much. The journey is a process. It's not an arrival date. It's a process. All you're looking to do, folks, is start the process. Get it started. Don't worry about the arrival date. Act like it's there. It, the arrival date is coming. But here is the beauty of the journey being a process. But all along the way of your journey, you will find success. The whole time you're on the, on the journey, the whole time you're in the process of finding your mission, fulfilling your mission, uncovering your dreams, reaching your goals, the beauty of it is all along the way, you're going to find success on so many levels. And people fail to look at that part. They keep thinking to themselves, man, I ain't there yet. I ain't, you know, it's like when you take a little kid on a long car trip and they're in the back seat. Are we there yet? Are we there yet? Boy, if you just look out the window, see where we done been. Look out the window. Look at the mountains. Look at these trees. Look at the views we got. No, we ain't there yet. But Lord have mercy. Look at what he's showing us along the way. Smell the roses. Have yourself a cup of coffee. Chill every now and then and see what he's doing for you. Because the journey is a process. But man, know that in the process of arriving at your designated goal, dream, ambition, or mission, understand this. That the journey is a process, but all along the way you'll find success. There are things that are going to happen to you along the way, man, that will be so gratifying and fulfilling where the journey is joyful. There is joy in the journey. You don't have to be there to appreciate the ride. Appreciate the journey and the process Stop getting mad because you ain't at the arrival date or your dreams ain't came true yet. Look up. Look up. You might discover, man, that you're living better. You might discover that you don't have a million yet, but you done made a quarter of a million. What you tripping for? Because you ain't got the million yet. Remember when you didn't have nothing? Be grateful for the $250,000 mark, the $100,000 mark, the $322,000 mark. Don't you understand, man? You may not be where you want to be, but man, can't you thank God that you ain't where you was? How about that one? Huh? All right. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. 
Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, uh, circus performers, athletes, talk show hosts, social media influencers, inmates, mm. faith-based people, okay. pastors, choir members, mm. strippers. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Get that and uh, choir members. former drug dealers. Yes. Okay. May I have your undivided attention? This is the Steve Harvey Morning Show. It's a different altar call. Man. Yeah, that, yeah, that oh, wasn't an yeah. altar call. That was just a call. That was just yeah. a call. Okay. That was just a shout out. That was just a shout out. Yeah. yeah, that's all that was. Wow. Shirley Strawberry. Hey, good morning, Steve. I love it. I love it. Call it for real. Good morning, Steve. What's up, crew? Uh, the most promising young up and coming comedian that I know. Junior. Morning, Unc. My mentor, man. How you feeling? Ladies and gentlemen, King of Pranks, nephew Tommy. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Top of the morning, baby. Thursday it is, Uncle Steve. It's Thursday. Yeah. Man. It is. I don't know. I just did it. Okay, uh-huh. I thought something came after that. No, I wasn't purple. nothing with it. <laughs> no, I wasn't <laughs> nothing with it. Ain't no... That ain't the opening to no song or nothing. I just, you know, just sang it to my damn self. Forgot I was on the radio. <laughs> really? <laughs> you know what I'm I really, that we just started. I just, it just happened. I just started singing and went, hey, 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 fool, you on the radio. <laughs> mm. Hey, Steve, you know, you're having fun at your job. Yeah, that's cool. You know yeah. what I, I was going to ask you? Remember the other day, a couple of days ago, we got really deep uh, one morning when we opened the show and talked about our regrets and stuff. Oh, yeah. we're not doing it again, yeah. are we? Well, <laughs> no, on, no. Come on, no, now. we're not doing that again. Tommy, you can't handle no, it anymore. We're not, ahead, we're not what, doing what? that again, Steve. I just wanted to, I just thought about something that I didn't regret in my life. You know, because oh. you have, you do have regrets, but one thing I do not regret, and that's, well, I mean, should I say it? Go ahead. I, I was just thinking it to myself, but anyway, one thing I don't regret is cutting off my sixth finger, because you know I had an extra finger on each hand. I, yeah, I got that cut off. Yeah. Wanna know. I got them cut off. It was mostly so for I'm the men you was kissing because that extra <laughs> finger on the back. I don't regret yeah, that. I don't regret some people that off. Throw some people. I don't regret doing that. I just wanted to Because I tell off. you right now, if you shake my hand, I'm going to snatch back. <laughs> and that's what was happening when I was yeah. little. Nobody wanted to <laughs> hold my hand. Well, Nobody wanted want, to hold my hand. I don't want to shake your hand now since I know Shut up. You can't even tell. If I shake your hand now, I'm going to try to feel around because I'm probably a nub over there. Look, it's like where it used to start at. I don't want to see that. There's got to be at least a little shiny spot. How many toes you got? Eight? Mm-mm, just yeah. Oh, so that's my. That's my. Did they charge you extra for when you got your nail? No, back? they didn't. <laughs> yeah, they didn't did. have a nail. <laughs> <laughs> they didn't have a nail. It was just about that. I'm just. Most glad. people only got four toes because the baby toe don't count. It's just tucked <laughs> off in there. Yeah, but if you lose it, you will fall. Okay. Uh, yeah, they, you need the balance. Yeah. You talking about toes? Yeah, we Carla. We talking about toes right now. <laughs> yeah. Don't How's do your... it. <laughs> I, I forgot to call her broke her toe. All right, the coming up at 32. <laughs> I got a partner that ain't got a big toe, and he wears sandals. Mm. Oh, oh. has a sandal holding on. He got to stay leaning forward. That ain't a flip. <laughs> That's just a flop. All right, we got to go. Coming up at 32 after the hour, we will hear from the nephew yet again as he runs that prank back right after this. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. All right, it is time now to start your morning off with the nephew and run that prank back. What you got for us, Neff? No blacks for you. Let's go, cat dog. Hello? Hello, I'm trying to reach uh, Nicole, please. This is she. How you doing? Listen, I'm giving you a call. Uh, You you happen to be um, uh, in a relationship with a a black man, Am am I right? I'm sorry, who is this? I'm sorry, my name is Brian. Uh, well, I don't want to give my uh, full name, but it's Gia Dyer. Gia Dyer Malcolm. Okay, and, and I'm sorry, why are you calling? Okay, now you, you, you are a Caucasian woman, correct? <laughs> okay, why, I'm, I'm still trying to get to why are you calling? Uh, uh, well, what, what's going on is um, uh, I'm with an organization, and we're calling people who are in interracial relationships. And, and from my understanding, you are in a interracial relationship correct yes okay i'm with nbfu and that's uh nbfu is no blacks for you and what we're doing is we're trying to get 
uh, uh, races to go back to dating each other, you know, which means Caucasians going back you, to dating. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. At first, I, I don't know who you think you are calling my house, but that's just not going to happen. And I don't know where this organization is based out of. I mean, you must be some country bumpkin or something, and you have just really called the wrong house. Okay, well, no, when, uh, 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 NBFU, ma'am, has been around since uh, the early 1940s. Yeah, I can imagine. I can home. imagine that. Now, I'm sure at some point you guys have to shut the down because this is just ridiculous. Do you know? What I mean, Obama's mother was white. Are you gonna go knock on his door too? What the hell are you I'm talking about? I'm not gonna about? have time to knock on Obama's door. He's busy yeah. doing other no, things right now. I mean, right for real. What like, I'm trying to do is get the rest of the country who, to understand who gave, about what NBF, is this? Hey, hey, you no black. And that's what I'm saying. What I'm trying to, tell you. trying to tell us we can't be together because you're black and I'm white. He's oh. con. Oh. Yo, what's up? Who this? Uh, 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 uh okay. Who, 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 who is this? This is a, I'm a, I'm a man. Who this? Okay, this is G, uh, G Adia, G Adia Malcolm. And what I'm doing, man, is we, we, you know, I'm with an organization called NBFU. And NBFU, man, is no blacks for you, which what we're trying to do is we're trying to get all races to go back to each other. Dude, what you talking about? Dude, you tripping, man. You are, what, what, what kind of organization is that? Y'all are tripping. Okay, brother, let me ask you something. You don't, feel, you don't feel empty without the sister on your side? You don't feel empty without uh, no, a no, loving uh, black woman on your side? That's what I'm asking you, brother. Well, I, got, I got plenty of black women on my side, but that don't mean that I got to be in a relationship with a black woman. I'm in a relationship with a woman I love. So that's what it's about. And I don't feel empty. That's the first problem with your organization right there. The, the premise is wrong. Okay, 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 but brother, what we're trying to do, man, we don't want to lose our race. We don't want the blacks to lose the strength that we have. And if blacks continue to date and mate with blacks, then we will be as powerful and stronger than any other race in the world. Where, how, where'd you get this number from, man? Excuse me? How'd you get this number in the first place, dude? I mean, I ain't got time for all this, man. This is some nonsense, bro. How you, why are you calling us? Hey, man, because aren't y'all an interracial uh, couple? Well, yeah, but what difference does that make? That ain't none of your business. Hey, but it is my business. I'm with, I'm with NBFU. No okay, who you with, you. Dog. you are a black who... person that is integrated within another race. And what we're trying to do, man, is get you to understand to come back to your race and be comfortable and happy in your race. Oh, oh, oh you really f up now, dog. Come back to my race. I never left my race, dog. You are tripping, yo. And be you. You. Y'all get off our phone, man. Don't call here no more with that. Do you think that you are happier with a Caucasian woman than you would be with a black woman? Man, I, I, I don't even, even want to entertain this. Don't call here no more. Don't call here no more. Uh, what do you, but let me you ask you something, understand. brother. Be a man and answer the question. Oh, dog. You, you know what? You about to get your ass <laughs> whooped, dog. You, you know what? You really, you really going to get your ass <laughs> whooped. Be a man. I'm asking you to be a man. man. I'm a grown man. man. I'm and you know you. what? If you bring your ass <laughs> over here, you'll find out how much of a grown <laughs> man I am. Hey, man, don't get like your said, don't. whooped, man, while I'm in the middle of asking you these questions. Because I ain't got no problem coming over there. I got your phone number. I got your address, too. Bring your ass <laughs> on over here and see what you find. I'm asking you about these relationships, man. Are you more comfortable in a relationship with a Caucasian woman than you are with a black woman? Dog, I told you, man, it ain't even about that, and we ain't even going into that. So, look, just please, brother, can you stop calling here? Don't call my girl no, man, no more. we're Don't calling call all house. interracial people around the country. That's what NBFU does. We call all of y'all, and we try to talk some sense into you and see if you can change the world and go back to the races from which you came. <laughs> You're tripping, yo. You're really tripping, man. You know what? Obviously, you, you, there's a, a mental institution you're calling from because there's something wrong with you. So, look, don't call here no more, and we ain't got no more problems, all right? Can I say this, can can I say this to you? I'm going to your, your girl's job, and I'm talking to her face-to-face -to -face tomorrow about this whole situation. And you know what? And you're going to get your whooped. No, I ain't getting my whooped. I'm going tomorrow, and I'm talking. Matter of fact, right. I ain't even called to talk to you. You put her back on the phone. To hell with you. Put <laughs> her back her on job. the phone. Show up at her job tomorrow and see what happens. I'm showing up Show at her job. Put her back on the phone. Show up at her job tomorrow and see what happens. You didn't change, man. You change. You don't know me from the beginning, dude. How you gonna tell me I didn't change? You don't know me. I, I, look know at, me? I know how you brothers get, man. I'm as black as I ever was. You can't measure my blackness because of who I'm dating. 
You show up at a job tomorrow, you're going to get your ass for You ain't going to sit here and threaten me, man. I am with okay, him. We're done. You, you done worked him up, and now I'm worked up. You're, you're done. You're done. So you can stop calling the house. And I I'm wish coming to your you job would. tomorrow. Do you understand me? I'm coming I to your job. I wish you would. Me. Please do. Are you Please listening do. to me? Matter of fact, you can have your man at your job at lunchtime. Not only am I going to talk to you at lunchtime, I'm going to whoop his while oh, I'm there. There's not going to be any talking. You show up, there's not going to be any talking. Yeah, there's it's going to be any talking. talking. Me and you have a discussion to uphold. And the okay. F you won't okay. talk to you. You know what? There's a saying. Arguing with a fool makes you a fool. So this conversation is over. Can I say one more thing to you? What? This is nephew Tommy from the Steve Harvey Morning Show. You just got pranked by your girlfriend. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my goodness. <laughs> wow. <laughs> I gotta ask y'all before I leave, and I need to hear this from both of y'all. What is the baddest radio show in the land? Every morning show. <laughs> All right, nephew. Thank you. Coming up next, ask the CLO. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. It's time to start the show off with Ask the CLO. Steve Harvey is our chief love officer. This one is from Melanie in Canada. Melanie writes, I'm 37 years old and I'm dating a 40-year-old man that I met online. We've been together for a few months and we're both over the dating BS and ready to get married. Because of that, he's brutally honest to the point where it's offensive to me. For example, on our first date, he said my breath was stinky. He said my cooking needs work and he's told me I'm a terrible driver. I know he's got to truly like me because if he didn't, he would tell me. Is this an acceptable way to get to know someone or not? It yeah, don't sound like he like you to me. Uh, at all. I don't know where you done got all this love from. Your breath right. stink, you can't cook, and your ass, he don't like your driving. Wow. <laughs> That's the beginning. <laughs> of it. And as you get married, that list going to grow. I'm just here to tell you. Yeah, you so if cool. I were you, this old we in love, I would, you know, we, we're over the dating game. It's only been how long, Shirley? Oh, they've Some only months. dated a few months. Yeah, just a few this, months. You, lady, you don't even know this man. Right. A right. few months mm -hmm. is not enough time. Now, he's brutally honest. What's mm -hmm. what's behind that brutal honesty? Ooh. What what Ooh. what else is brutal? I don't like brutal. Yeah. I don't like mm -hmm. You know, so if I were you, I would spend a little bit more time getting to know this man. Because if he this quick to be this harsh with you, wait mm -hmm. till something's wrong. He's yeah. mean. Ugh. I don't. Uh, it don't sound like she have it though. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> you shut up. Like <laughs> that was just their first date. <laughs> he only said it one time, according to her. Tierra in Culver City, California says, "I'm in my mid thirties and I've been with a great guy for a few months. I'm into polyamory and uh, my best friend and I are lovers too, but my man doesn't know it yet." She got me into the lifestyle, and now I basically recruit guys for her pleasure and mine. For the first time in a long time, I have a guy that I really like. Should I introduce him to my lifestyle and have sex with him and my best friend, or should I keep this one all to myself? What? I can't Ooh. advise you on this foolishness. <laughs> I've never seen this work out for anybody. <laughs> I, I, I haven't. Now, it may, but I haven't seen it work out for anybody. Mm -hmm. Somebody going to want what they want, and they ain't going to want the other person to know it or have it. That's yep. always the case. Happening. Yep. So, look, why you just go on and do your thing? You ain't finna have nobody all to your damn self. Because mm -hmm. you ain't all, you don't, you don't right. see, if you want to be somebody, somebody, mm -hmm. then somebody got to be your somebody. But everybody can't be everybody's everybody. Mm. <laughs> Wait, one more time. Yeah, if you want to be yeah. somebody, somebody, uh -huh. then somebody going to want to be your somebody. Uh -huh. But everybody can't be everybody's everybody. Because that's what the hell going on right yeah, here. Yeah, they're just doing everybody. <laughs> you know, you can't belong to everybody and just them. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> because somebody ain't going to go along with the rules. I thought we was doing everybody. Now, if your girlfriend didn't introduce you to it and you with her, but you want him, but you don't want him to be with her, uh, that ain't how this work. Because Polly going to want a cracker. Yes, Polly going to want Yes. 
I don't know what all Polly Emma, who whatever. Well, Polly gonna want a cracker after a while. Yeah. <laughs> I thought Everybody, you everything. I thought you were saying Polly okay. and somebody named Marie. All right. <laughs> all right, here we go. We're moving on. Uh, Celestia in Austin, Austin, Texas says, I'm 31 years old dating a 39 year old guy that can't get his mother out of his love life. Whenever he invites me to a family function, his mother invites his ex-girlfriend. His ex still hangs with his mother like they're best friends. His mom even had a 40th birthday dinner for this girl at her house and blamed me when my ex didn't come to the party. My man said that his mom is deliberately doing things to irritate me, so why does he allow this? Good question. Well, I mean, what can he disallow? He can't make his mama stop talking to his ex-girlfriend because his mama messy. Very. He can't tell his mama you can't have this girl over your house no more. And and he can tell his mama, mom, don't throw her no party. But but her mama don't like the new girlfriend. She wants the old girlfriend to win. And the old girlfriend is fine rubbing it in your face. If he ain't going to make it convenient for you, why are you making it convenient for him? Exactly. Exactly. He getting what you what he want. He got you and his mama cool, but you ain't got nothing you want. You don't even have all of him. She mad at you because you didn't let him come to her birthday party. Right. What? He's not a great guy if he doesn't stop this foolishness. <laughs> all right, we're moving on. Uh, Isabel in Clearwater, Florida writes, My husband had an affair a year ago that resulted in a child that I have to raise. The child's mother was sent to jail for selling marijuana, and she came to me, apologized for the affair, and asked me to take her baby. I don't have any kids, and this child looks so much like my husband that it makes me ill. He's doing everything he can to work things out with me, but I'm ready to leave. She's ready to leave. Um... This is, <laughs> and she says she wants to take the baby with her, Steve, but he says she can't take the baby with her and she doesn't want to stay. So wh what does she do now? Well, you have no rights to the baby, I don't think, unless the mother signed the rights over to you. She asked you, but that's the father. So right. the father and the mother have the rights. Who is right. this woman he was sleeping with there smoking weed and selling it? Mm -hmm. And her ass is going to jail. Yeah. And now it's you, just... but, the, but the baby make you look sick, make you sick because he looked just like her. But now you want to leave him, but you want to keep the baby. So you want to take the thing that make you sick every time you look at it with you. What's wrong with you? It makes no oh. sense, does it? Damn, <laughs> give that man the baby and go start your life over. Yes. Mm -hmm. All right. That's it. Thank you, CLO. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. All right, Thanksgiving. Wow, did it come fast this year? It's here. Yeah, we're all gathering around the Thanksgiving table, dinner conversations. It can be a little tense, you know. So we just want you guys to prepare with some phrases that you should avoid at holiday dinners so we can just, you know, all have a good time with our family and friends, okay? Like, okay, for instance. Like, yeah, okay. Mm -hmm. For instance, Steve, um, when you start a sentence with, you should have, mm. you should have... You know, the mm. word should, you know, can make a person feel judged or disappointed. You see where I'm going with that? You mean like, you should have let somebody else fix the green. <laughs> right. yeah. 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 Yeah, that's hurtful. Yeah. Exactly. That's, that's yeah. But it's yeah. hurtful, though. Yeah. It, it's, you should have left the marshmallows out them yams. That's thank like you. that. Yeah. I'm with you. I'm with yeah. you on that. <laughs> My feelings are not hurt with uh -huh. You should have called before like you came over here. Uh huh. Yeah. Like oh, how about this? I know it's potluck, but you should have just came. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> Without the pot, yeah. Yeah. Without we're not the pot. The pot, cause ain't no luck in your <laughs> pot. <laughs> yeah, stuff like that, Steve. You got it. Or yeah, you so know, avoid saying that. Yeah, a avoid saying this. You know, cause this is definitely this could start one right here. Um, can you believe what your president just did? Mm. You can't if say you that. Start, yeah. Yeah, it, it can lead to an argument and a fight. You know, politics. Oh, no, no, yeah, everybody in agreement on my family. No, my family all good with that. That's going to get the party popping right there. Oh, okay. All right. So you're not going to avoid right. saying that? Oh, no, no, no. You can talk politics in my house. 
Everybody at my house in the same political mindset. Oh, we don't okay. have. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, you know, Republican at the table. You got the kids. Yeah. If you are Republican table. at the table, you need to keep it to yourself. <laughs> <laughs> don't let that information Okay, Because you won't be. <laughs> okay, let's get back to the food. my daddy's house. Oh, uh-huh. Let's get back to the food for a minute. Uh, how about this one? You know, the best turkey I ever had was... Not this one. Huh? <laughs> You're not supposed to finish it. What? No, hold on, hold on, Shirley, say it again. The best turkey I ever had was... Was my mama. <laughs> <laughs> you can't Everybody say that. Yeah. yeah. That's mean. That'll set it off, Steve, if yeah. you say well, something you know, like that. It's true, though. <laughs> you don't have to always tell the truth, though. Right. No, yeah. no, no, no. See, Shirley, see, once again, uh -huh. mm. y'all need to make up your mind. Now, do you all want us to be true? <laughs> or you want these lies to be good? It's a, it's With a, Lying on Thanksgiving. Yeah. Tell the truth. It's a good time to um, ask that question. <laughs> Any so, more? Yeah, you know, like uh, if you start a sentence with, when are you going to learn how to cook? <laughs> mm. <laughs> Don't do that. <laughs> oh, when you going to finally let him go? <laughs> yeah, okay. That's the one yeah. right there, Tom. Uh-huh, uh-huh. Because <laughs> right you don't want to make anyone feel defensive or put anyone on the yeah. spot or anything My like that. My family is, when is you going to stop using drugs? <laughs> wow. 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 Really? Just a little bit more, little bit more personal. <laughs> yeah. You just kept well, I'm just telling you, that's what's going to come out. I don't know why we sit up and act like it ain't going to happen. I don't know what's wrong with y'all. It's going to happen. I want to go to your house for this. Oh, no. I want to go to Junior. <laughs> just come over there. 15 minutes, you ain't going to be able to take it. <laughs> You're lying. You're 15. You 15. If it starts off with that, yeah. I believe you. As soon as he walk in the door. When is you going to stop using drugs? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you show up every year looking like this. <laughs> how about hey, this Aaron, one? Robert, huh? this right here. No, no, how about this right here? Sit somewhere where I can see you. <laughs> <laughs> where you going? Where you, where you going? going? Yeah. Bathroom ain't that way. <laughs> right. Ain't no bathroom that way. <laughs> and, you know, try not to, to open up a conversation or start a sentence with, when are you going to... Just, just, don't do that one. Or remember the time you peed on yourself? <laughs> no! Yeah. yeah, that's good. <laughs> My Uncle Everett <laughs> Thanksgiving huh? used to go. He was drunk. I'm telling you. <laughs> And remember that time you, you bought that jello mold? <laughs> Ain't nobody won't. <laughs> I didn't bust out laughing. Everybody laughing but them. <laughs> but right. yeah, wait a minute. Right. Wait a minute. Hold up. Did you hear about, don't start it with that one. Because that can mean, gossip. yeah, you gossiping about, you yeah. know, somebody you in the family. You hear about your husband. <laughs> exactly. yeah. Wait, what? What? Did you hear about your husband? Oh, that's mm. going to get us started that's right there. In the uh, back room with Cora. Oh. Did you hear about that? <laughs> Cora, not Cora. <laughs> Cora. Yeah, those are just conversation starters. You don't do that. Yeah. All yeah. this gonna happen. All this gonna Thanksgiving happen Thursday. Thursday. Trust me, this mm -hmm. gonna happen. Well, I'll admit this. None of that happens at my house because I have no one at my house on Thanksgiving. As big as you create, nobody create no drama. Not at my house. Oh, oh, okay. I thought you were saying you had no one at your house. I was like, as big as your family is, Steve. Oh, the house gonna be packed. Yeah. I don't do drama. Yeah, yeah, not at the house. Everybody know. Don't ask me to play. I don't do, I do, you know, the game night. I might come in there for a couple minutes, but that's it. Y'all know what I'm doing. I'm going to eat, what and I'm doing? sitting in front of this TV. Oh, I'm oh. staring at it. And sometimes <laughs> you're going to come in there, and the TV going to be staring at me. Yeah. Just walk back out. <laughs> Don't come in here just in the heat. I want it this one. <laughs> Keep people Get out. The fire places on. Don't cut it off. So you don't mind them being in your house. A lot of people just don't bother you. Let you well, have your space. I mean, you don't want to you know be bothered. Uh -huh. Why are the people there? Yeah. <laughs> well, Marjorie's really good at that, too, because she tells them, this Steve, that Steve off. Mm -hmm. Don't bring your friends and your friends want pictures. Oh, that ain't oh, oh yeah. my God. Well, yeah. I could give yeah. that. Yeah. I that ain't happening. Mm -hmm. Meanwhile, at our house, all they want to talk about is you. Yes. <laughs> oh, really? <laughs> Steve, <laughs> come on. Steve, Steve. <laughs> yeah. I just hate when they want me to tell Steve something for them. Oh, oh always. always. All the time. Tell him, give them. Can you just give this to Steve for me? Mm -hmm. 
I, all I of that. I know this is a bestseller right yeah. here. We just get it to Steve. Yes. Not getting, I'm not going to get your book to Steve. Hit him on, kill me. <laughs> okay. I got this book of mine I want you to read. <laughs> I didn't read the four I wrote. I know. <laughs> You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. All right, guys, it is time now for a round of Would You Rather. Would you rather date someone with their ex's name tattooed on their chest or would you rather date someone whose ex lives next door? Oh, that's easy. B. Okay. Yeah. Next yeah, door. You can't, I, you, I, I, you can't just have Tremaine cross your chest. I, that's all I see yeah. every day. I, no. <laughs> that's her that ex. Yeah, yeah, I can't do that one. But he's, mm-hmm. you're, you'll see him. He lives next door. You're going to see him. I, I yeah, have become hey, friends hey, with him. I'm cool. Hey, bro, really? What's happening? Tremaine, you you see him every well, day. What I'm not gonna do is see Tremaine every time I look at her chest, though. That's not <laughs> what I'm going to. Do. Oh, so no. it's the location uh-huh, of the tattoo uh-huh. as well. Yeah. Okay, okay. Because I, I looks at that a lot. Yeah. <laughs> chest, chest area. <laughs> chest and butt. I can't have that there. No. <laughs> No. Okay. So the Tremaine, your right. neighbor. Watch, watch, okay. watch yeah. this, Shirley. This is how it goes, yeah. Shirley. What up, okay. Tremaine? And then go in the house. That's it. <laughs> and if you talk to Tremaine long enough, you'll find out what's wrong with her. Hello. <laughs> <laughs> now that's true. <laughs> All right. Would you rather live in a different fancy hotel every night with unlimited room service credit? Or would you rather live in your dream home mansion but not be able to hire any help? Oh, hell no. Uh. Mm. Now, this uh. mansion just falling apart? I'm in four seasons, dog. <laughs> Living in that big, dusty-ass house. <laughs> yeah. 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 Uh, uh, we seen it when your staff fall back at your house. We seen how you act. Yeah. <laughs> How does he yeah. act? I, I can't find nothing. He don't yeah. know what nothing is. Yeah, yeah, I ain't going to do that. But I yeah, don't okay. live in a different hotel room every day. Every though. night. But you have unlimited uh, room service credit every single night. Or right. living your dream home mansion you with you no help. Thank that, man. We're talking about four seasons. we talking about. Uh, uh, the Mandarin, we t- boy, the boy, we talking about something. We yeah, talking about Lowe's every Ritz. day, though. The new Nobu Hotel in Atlanta. <laughs> wow. I don't know. But you got to move every night. Every night, uh. Yeah. Yeah. We'll just move. That's we'll awesome. quit bringing all that luggage. Look, one bag, <laughs> bunch of draw. Let's move. Let's go. <laughs> yeah. All right. A big match with Lowe's. It's going to be rough either way. I had to go into a different hotel. All right. Hell, Last one. What you guys... Match. Why is Steve out there cutting that yard on this 50 summer? <laughs> <laughs> he been out there all week. Doesn't he have a week. gardener? <laughs> he he fell sick. off of it Friday. The sun was beating up and he was hungry. He ain't got no shelf, you know. <laughs> all right, guys. That's today's round of Would You Rather. Uh, coming he up at 40. No guards at his gate or nothing. They just, these people just climbing over the wall, talking to him. <laughs> You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. All right, it is time for Junior's Truth Be Told. Yeah, yeah. All right, Shirley, uh, Thanksgiving's coming up. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's almost mm-hmm. a big day yep. now. We, yeah. we have discussed mm-hmm. all of the things. We've discussed when people need to bring food. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. What time dinner start. Yeah, what all time again? Who coming. We've discussed all this. One thing we have not discussed. What? What? Mm. The one thing... When your ass need to leave. <laughs> oh, yeah. yeah we have to discuss. Now, people, truth, people don't know when to leave. There's time you need to leave. There are statements that will be made you need to adhere to and understand. Mm-hmm. Like, well, that's it. See, when you hear that, start getting your keys in your hand. We need to hear some jangles, something. Yeah. It's time to go. You can't spend all day here. Dinner started at 2. Treat it like a restaurant. How long you staying there? Right. You sit down at 2, about 3.30, you're gone. Same way. Hour and a half. That's about right. Yeah. We're about yeah. an hour and a half. That's an hour and a half. What about the game? Yeah. Forget all it. You ain't come over here for the game. You came to eat. <laughs> if you fool, if I see you kick off a shoe, your ass got to go. <laughs> <laughs> Let me they catch a do, shoe off they your don't foot. Don't do that. Yeah, no. You ain't staying here all day. Now, my mama tired. She didn't cook everything. She didn't mm-hmm. fed everybody. What else can we talk about? Mm-hmm. We discussed everything. Wow. 
We know Walter got out of jail. We know Hattie had a heart transplant. We know, we know, yeah, we know, we know Melba Yo, had another oh, baby. We Yo, got all this information. Sick. After we come, after Melba we come at, still having kids. Melba still have kids. <laughs> when your name oh, Melba. Melba at forty five, yeah. still having babies. Come on, man. Don't. Your name Melba, you probably. Yeah. Yeah, you probably probably having yeah. baby. No, you probably through having baby. Anybody that named Melba, <laughs> they too having baby. <laughs> we covered all what does the name have to do with it, Steve? <laughs> Got a lot to do with your age. If your name is Agnes, you probably didn't had all your kids. All kids. <laughs> yeah, you probably got grandkids. <laughs> but we done covered everything we can talk about. We know, mm -hmm. we know Junior went back into rehab. We got that. Wow. Everything is covered. Mm -hmm. Let's just go ahead and go home. We just mm -hmm. need you to go home. That's it. Beatrice. She's through having <laughs> Beatrice will be through having Stop with the old Beatrice. name. It's Beatrice. He said Beatrice. It's Beatrice. Some people Beatrice. say Beatrice. Some people Beatrice. say Beatrice. That's Beatrice. Beatrice. Yeah. Oh, Odetta is not having kids. <laughs> That's <laughs> what he got out of there. Odetta. Oh, exactly. Yeah, yeah. I'm giving you the names where I can assure you if this is your name, you are at an age where you are beyond childbearing years. <laughs> Give me another okay. one. Sojourner. Oh, Sojourner. Yeah. <laughs> Sojourner is through having babies. You, had, well, you want another one? Go ahead. Yeah. Henrietta. Henrietta? <laughs> she through having kids. <laughs> Henrietta tubes is dusty. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You got any more? You need to know? Go ahead. Yeah. Gwen. Gwen. Okay, I got Ooh, I love Gwen, 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 Gwen is through yeah, having kids. Gwen ain't having no kids. I love a Gwen. Gwen 52. Because she got a 52 year old name. That's it, Gwen. See, his names, once you have an old name, you can quit having babies. If your name is Bob, <laughs> you probably <laughs> through having kids. I'm just saying. Ain't nobody named Bob was still having kids. Yeah. Not can, Bob. Yeah. Can, Edna, can Edna have a kid? Oh, Edna no. been through having kids. <laughs> Roberta. Betty. Done. Shirley. Betty. Betty. Shirley. Oh, here's no. Gladys. 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 Oh, yeah. 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 That's right up there with Agnes. Yeah. 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 I'll tell you who threw. Who? Jackie is. I tell you that. <laughs> hey, Jack. <man. laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> Mary, Marjorie, all of that. Yeah. Margaret. Last Esther. night I ain't even sleep in the bed last night. Oh, Esther. Steve, you what forgot about Esther. Esther I got ain't Esther. Yeah. Because Rose slept with us last night. Uh-huh. I took my shower, man. I was tired as hell because I fell asleep in my office. Mm -hmm. So I went upstairs, I took a shower, came into the bedroom out my bathroom. Put my light on on my little phone. Mm -hmm. Rose in the bed. I just turn around <laughs> when I don't stay. I'm not finna do this to me. <laughs> Is she I'm not gonna sleeper? have her set her damn heel in my eye. You know? <laughs> I remember you say that about Winton, Steve, when Winton was little. <laughs> man, these kids, man, they just they sleep bad, don't uh -huh. they? Uh huh. I was a bad no, sleeping sure. kid. Oh, I was. They ain't got nowhere to go. Mm -hmm. I gotta go to work. You in here sleeping bad. Get on your side. <laughs> right. Matter of yeah, fact, go to your get room. Get out the go damn to bed. Why yeah. you in go here? Go to your room. <laughs> Noah in his bed. Why you got to sleep in here? I sleep with none of Papa. Oh, okay, well, that's so Papa sweet. don't want to sleep with you. <laughs> How could you turn Papa that down? No. But it hurt her, though. Yeah, Papa wants yeah. to sleep with Nana, too. <laughs> <laughs> the nephew of the prank phone call right after this. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. Coming up at the top of the hour, right about four minutes after, it's my strawberry letter for today. The subject, keep your nasty hands off me. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> right now, though, it is the nephew. He is here with today's prank phone call. What you got, Neff? Surely King Thanksgiving yeah. with Cousin Benji. <gasps> Thanksgiving with Cousin Benji. Okay. Y'all ain't ready for this. Here it is. Listen to it. Oh, my God. Hello? Hello, who is this? Miss Glenda, who is this? This Benji. I'm, I'm calling. Is, is, is Miss Purvis there? Um, no, she's not here right now, but this is her daughter. Um, is there a problem? Uh, no, nah, this, this, this Benji. This Mama, uh, Mama Lois' nephew. Who, who is this again? This Glenda. This you know, is, um, Mama, Mama Lois, Mama Lois, your ain't it, ain't it? Correct. Mama Lois and Miss Herbert's sister. Okay, I'm Benji. I'm, I'm, I'm her nephew from the other side of the family. You say your name what now? Glenda. Okay, what time y'all supposed to get in? Um, we should be there by the afternoon. Okay, uh, is is Miss Purvis, is she, is, is your mama making the, 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 the dressing? Yeah, she's making enough for about 45 people. Um, actually, um, this was discussed about a month ago. 
Right, y'all on the y'all. We, they had the um the conference call. The conference, the family had the conference call, right? Yes, sir. Okay, now listen. What, what the reason why they they got me to call? They wanted me to go ahead and call, and, and I was trying to get Miss Purvis. You, she not there? No, she's not here. What's wrong? Oh, uh, okay. They not gonna they not gonna need her to do the um to do the dress. And why wouldn't they need her to do this? She been making it for ten years. We just we just discussed this. So what do you mean? They they say that they got somebody down here that's gonna do the dresses. Especially since y'all traveling, y'all ain't got to bring it, you know, uh, and be traveling with it. But they got somebody gonna do the dress. Okay. Well, first of all, who are you? You're you're Benji. What is your name? That was not my name, Benjamin. But they call me Benji. But 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 uh, uh, like I say, uh, I'm on the other side of the front. I ain't on y'all side. Okay, well, I'm still trying to figure out why the f- are you calling me? Because she's been making a dress for 10 years, like I said. And, I mean, it's been discussed, so I don't even know why why you're calling me. I don't even know you. Uh, okay, well, what I'm trying to explain to you this right here is that they got some, y- y'all ain't got to worry with bringing the dress in. They got somebody going to bring, they got somebody down here that's going to cook it. So, in other words, what, you know, y- if you can tell Miss Purvis she ain't got to worry about the dressing this year. Oh, so you want me to tell my mama after she's been making dresses for 10 years that y'all say you, y'all ain't worried about it. She shouldn't have to make it this year because we driving there. We drive every year. So I'm not going to do that to her. So, I mean, I don't, I don't even know who you are to be calling me anyway. Why isn't somebody calling me that I know regarding this? Okay, okay. You Glenda, right? I am Glenda. Uh, all right, listen, let me say this because I, I don't mind saying what, what everybody thinking but but most people don't want to say let me just say this right here really what's going on is this right here a lot of people in the family you know don't really don't don't really like miss purvis dress <laughs> benji benjamin who the f- are you supposed to be let me explain something to you my mama gonna make this f- dressing you f- gonna eat that f- and we ain't bringing that on with us. So you can tell your family that I said that. Do you understand me? No, I, I, I mean, I, I, first of all, you got to understand that I'm bringing news that, that, that people done, done voted on, and this is what everybody want to do. Don't nobody... Well, well, why didn't they call? We had a meeting. My mom made the dressing. She been making it 10 years. Ain't nobody been saying nothing. And guess what? When I'm up in that house, nobody better not be walking up and through there talking about my mama either. And y'all go eat the Okay, but see right there. Why, why, if people don't like the dressing, Glenda, why does you want to make su- submit everybody to having to eat it if they don't like it? You don't eat. Sh-. That's all I know. I don't know. Sh-. You are calling me no. Sh-. Well, I don't know no sh-. Benjamin, Benji, whoever the hell you are. I'm Mama Lois' nephew from the other side of the family. Exactly. I don't know you. Okay, and, and, and really, really to, to back all that, I don't really know you. But I'm, but but I'm, but I'm man enough. To, I'm man enough to call you and tell you what we gon' do and what we ain't gon' do. Well, I know my thing. I done said it once and I repeat it again. She gon' make that dressing. You gon' eat it and we gon' go on by our day. Okay, okay, right there. Listen, and I know this might be hard for you to understand. What you grew up with liking, everybody else might not like. You, you can say what you want to. I don't even remember your being in my way. So you might not like it because you ain't been around, but she making dressing. Now, first of all, when y'all get down here, it's going to already be some more dressing here. Okay, okay. And she going to make her dressing, and we going to sit down, and we all going to eat. And I'm not, it's, 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 it's not even going to be discussed no further than that. I said what I got to say because you're not going to hurt my mama's feelings. Okay, there ain't nobody trying. That's why I'm trying to tell you to tell her don't make it now so she don't even bring it down. We are we make it when we get there anyway. Hey, look, I'm finna say this here, because evidently you ain't really understanding what I'm saying to you. I'm going to say it as clear as I can say it. If y'all come down here with that dress, I promise you, we already got dressing made. We throwing that dressing in the trash so everybody can get the dressing that we made for them. Point blank. That's what we doing. Please, let me explain something to you. I'm going to be on dressing <laughs> patrol, and if I find that you and threw my mama's dressing in the trash, it's going to be some and we're going to set that off. I'm not playing with you. This was too funny to me. Uncle Carl and Kilmer, we were all on this conference call. Ain't none of them ball enough to call us or tell us to bull. But now they're going to set your stupid up calling me. I don't even know your call. I guess they felt like you was the call, like you the baddest in the world. But Benji, Benjamin, what the I don't even know.
don't even know your rap. I'm telling you now. I'm not playing with you. I'm telling you. Anybody hurt my mama feeling? It's going to be some in that. And I'm telling you, all y'all going to be. Y'all full of down now. But I'm coming. Y'all out one. Can I, say, can I say something else to you? I wish you would. Can I tell you what else they were saying? What? They wanted me to tell you this, Glenda. This is nephew Tommy from the Steve Harvey Morning Show. Your cousin Sheila got me to prank phone call you. Tommy, <laughs> you almost got to hit. You about to make me say it all. What? <laughs> So that man, this Thanksgiving was, it wasn't gonna be no Thanksgiving, baby. Cause I was gonna have my brother's what? Vengeance. <laughs> Y'all play too much. Tommy, Thanksgiving was gonna be canceled, baby. Okay, come so, on, I gotta I'm, ask you, baby. Okay. One last question before I let you go. Okay. What is the baddest, and I mean the baddest, radio show in the land? Steve Harvey Morning Show. <laughs> oh, y'all gonna eat this? Dress. Oh, don't play with yeah, that, dress, this. man. <laughs> on Thanksgiving, uh -uh. man. Hey, listen, laying in the cut, December eight, nine, ten, Oakland, California. I a man, tell too short to blow the whistle, cause nephew coming to town. All right, that is Tommy T's December eight, ninth, and tenth, and then that place I have never been, Tacoma, Washington, December fifteenth, sixteenth, and seventeenth. Nate Jackson. Super funny. Comedy club. Nate, tell them, baby. The nephew coming. We have to go. When we come back, uh, the strawberry letter. <laughs> <laughs> You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. Time now for today's strawberry letter. And if you need advice on relationships, on dating, on work, on sex, on parenting, and more, please submit your strawberry letter to Steve Harvey FM and click Submit Strawberry Letter. We could be reading your letter live on the air right here, right now, just like we're going to read this one, okay? Love it. Love it. Yeah, that's for you, Jack. Buckle up and hold on tight. We got it for you. Here it is. Strawberry letter. Subject, keep your nasty hands off me. Dear Stephen Shirley, I am a 30-year-old woman that's in a dirty situation with my man. I love my man and couldn't have asked for a better partner. But there's one thing about him that ticks me off. He hates to wash his hands. We've been together for six years and we just got engaged. We moved in together last month and that's when I noticed his nastiness. He works long days at a factory and when he comes home, he changes his clothes and flops down on the bed. At first, I didn't want to say anything and nag him about it, but last week I couldn't hold it any longer. When I questioned him, he asked me why was it bothering him. Was it bothering me? Because they're his hands and his germs. I didn't care to argue with him, so I let it go. Over the weekend, he was in our garage tinkering around with his car and working on his motorcycle. He came straight into my kitchen and opened the refrigerator to get a beer and then proceeded to get the bread out of the pantry to make a sandwich. There was a visible trail of oil and grime everywhere he touched. I just stood there and watched him so I could go behind him and sanitize the kitchen when he finished. Whenever he's in the bathroom, there's a flush, and then the door opens right afterwards. I decided to take the same attitude with him, and I started withholding sex. I told him I didn't want his germs from his hands on me. I told him he would have to thoroughly wash his hands and clean under his nails daily or he's cut off from touching me. That caused an instant argument and he says he can't marry a woman who treats him like a child. I can't believe that he's upset that he's that upset. I don't want to get an infection from his nasty hands on me. How should I handle this? Please help. Well, I think you are handling it. I mean, you have asked him. You've asked him nicely. You've not nagged him about it. Uh, you know, you've told him about the germs, how you don't want to get an infection. You're not treating him like a child. I don't think you're doing that at all. You are expressing how you feel about what he's not doing. And that's simply being clean. I mean, you find out a lot about a person when you move in together. And that's one of the things maybe you didn't notice in the six years you guys have been uh, just dating before you got engaged. So now... Everything's come to light. Uh, you know, 
you're, it's just a matter of simply being clean and good hygiene, okay? For me, cleanliness is just a deal breaker. It just is. Anyone who doesn't wash their hands after using the bathroom, come on now. They're just nasty. Just nasty. Uh, he's even all in the kitchen going all in the refrigerator and touching stuff, making sandwiches and stuff. No, you got to wash your hands. What are you doing? Uh, you know, so after you've done everything, including withholding sex, and he still won't wash, I, I hope his hands is the only, you, you didn't mention anything else, but I hope that's, that's it. I mean, yeah, it would do more than just tick me off. I'm just telling you, I would be absolutely mad and appalled. What makes... I just think, you know, what makes you think he's going to change after marriage? He's not going to change. So if you don't get this situation settled before marriage, it, you're going to be even more frustrated once you get, uh, uh, you know, till death do you part vows involved. So you're going to have to deal with this. I, I mean, and he doesn't seem to be wanting to hear anything you have to say. So I don't know. This may not, Mr. Nasty may not be your man after all. Steve. Mm. Shirley, yeah. I agree with 100% of everything you've said. So that's a wonderful letter. But we're dealing with something here that's kind of crazy. Now, you've been together six years, and you got engaged, and you moved in together last month. Six years, and you just now noticing last month he <laughs> nasty? <laughs> What what do you must have been living in the most unobservational six year period in or any relationship? He work at a factory. He come home, change his clothes, flop down on the bed. Ew. Right there. When you work in a factory, which I have, you smell like the factory. It's a different air in the factory, man because it's in a confined space. And, the, and the, the oil, the machinery, the combustion, all of that combined, it's just in the air. Every factory has a certain smell to it. You know you at work if you blindfolded by the smell. Mm. It gets in your clothes. It's in your hair. Now it's all under his nails. You just not noticing this? Then you question him about it, and he asked you why I was bothering him, because they his hands and his germs. Well, your hands and your germs touch me. Yeah. So you've done what you should have done. You've retracted from having sex. Now he mad at you, and now he said he don't know if he can get married to a woman that treats him like a child. He done opened up the pantry with the refrigerator, I mean the bread, made a sandwich. Uh -huh. You got a visible trail of oil and grime everywhere he touched. So nasty. He making sandwiches, <laughs> reaching down in the bread, and ain't, what? <laughs> you open the refrigerator. It's over. <laughs> How many times have you got slapped upside yes. your, you don't come in this house and open this refrigerator without washing your hands? That's it. Mm -hmm. like a mini ass whoopers for that. Mm -hmm. <laughs> All right, hang on, Steve. We'll, yeah. yeah, we'll get part two of Steve's response coming up at 23 minutes after the hour. Subject, keep your nasty hands off me. <laughs> we'll get back into it right after this. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. All right, Steve, come on. Let's recap today's Strawberry Letter subject. Keep your nasty hands off me. This is an interesting letter. The woman's been dating this man. She's 30 years old, dating this man for six years. Uh, they finally got engaged. She moved in, and she noticed last month his nastiness. Mm -hmm. uh, he works in the factory. He comes home, changes his clothes, flops down on the bed. Uh, she mentioned to him that that was bothering her. He didn't understand it. He said, why are you tripping? These is my hands and my germs. She wanted him to wash his hands. She didn't want to argue with the man, so then he was outside working on the car and a, and a motorcycle, came in the house, opened the refrigerator, and left a trail of grime. He made a sandwich without washing his hands. You can see grime everywhere. Ew. Goes in the bathroom. She hears a flush. The next thing you know, he in the hallway talking. I'm out. <laughs> I'm just no out. Wash. No wash. <laughs> so she decided to take the same attitude with him, and the lady started withholding sex. Told him I didn't want his germs from his hands on me, 
unless he thoroughly washes his hands and clean under his nails daily, or he's cut off from touching me. Instant argument. This fool, Mr. Nasty, says, I can't marry a woman that treat me like a child. Well, she can't marry a man that act like a child. Mm. <laughs> so what is you two kids getting married for? <laughs> right. <laughs> it's time to break up. But I think I have a few solutions. There are some things that you might have to try, lady. Obviously, withholding sex, he's not equating that to cleanliness. Because now he tripping. Mm -hmm. I think you got to do little things to attract his attention. All of this has to do with the kitchen and things you can do to get him to understand the necessity for cleanliness. Here's a couple of suggestions you might want to try. The next time y'all sit down to eat a meal, take your shoes off. Put them on top of the table. Don't say nothing. Just keep eating. <laughs> <laughs> Don't say anything. <laughs> Here's another suggestion. You come out the bathroom, and while y'all in the living room, while y'all in the kitchen finna eat, just bring some toilet tissue in there. Set it in the middle of the table. Don't open your damn mouth. <laughs> Get you a sugar bowl. Go outside, put some dirt in it. Put that on the table, and when you make his food, open it and just sprinkle a little dirt around the edge of his plate. Don't say a damn thing. You like dirt? Just <laughs> sprinkle it around the plate. Keep it all over on his side of the table. It just it'll make him feel more at home. Don't say nothing. Don't say nothing. From now on, when it's time to make his sandwich, I want you to start reusing as much bread as you can. Mm. <laughs> yeah, you know, just reach down in there, get the end out the trash, and put a little peanut butter on it, make little hors d'oeuvre places, and just make a plate with just broken pieces of bread. Reuse bread. Matter of fact, before you make his sandwich with the bread, wipe off the counter with a slice of bread, oh, then Ooh, make his damn sandwich. Ooh, oh, wow. Oh, wow. Oh, well, that's not you in there now. Yeah. Maybe yeah. he'll get it if she you does You got that. to do serious stuff. Take his drawers. Uh-huh. Uh, Take uh, a pair of his drawers. Yeah. yeah. Dust the Drawed house it. with it. Wax the mm. furniture. And then hand them yeah. to him and tell him, have a nice day at work. Put them on. That's how you draw. Yeah, you have to do things to people who are nasty and don't even mention it. Mm. Baby, what is you what is you washing the floor and then handing me these drawers? Just wear them. Don't worry about it. It's just germs. You're going to have yeah. to do things like that. Fellas, you have any suggestions? Yes, I have some. I have a couple right here. Yeah, but what do you have, Jay? Leave his underwear, his underwear that he took off the night before, wrap his sandwich with it, and then wrap that in aluminum foil when he go to work to eat his yeah. sandwich. Uh, yeah. 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 Yeah, do that. Yeah. Draw like sandwich. Draw. Oh Draw. my God. Yeah. 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 Wow. Paper and fall. Yeah. His sandwich is mm -hmm. wrapped in his drawers. Wow. His sandwich is wrapped in yeah. his drawers. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. yeah. I like it. Now, if he like, I got most men like, you know, we like bananas. Peel the banana. Uh -huh. Peel it down. Uh -huh. Put the banana in his socks. Put that in his Ooh. lunchbox. Yeah. And know that's his banana. Yeah. Yeah. Put that in there. Uh, I yeah. got it. Since that's you brought up socks, Jay, I have another mm. one. You got another one? <laughs> Wash his factory socks mm. uh -huh. in a yeah. pot on the stove. <laughs> I was. Mm. But serve it also as sock soup. Yes, but, mm. but see, can I add to that? Put that in there. No, that's funky. Put some, put some chicken in there so if he can decide to eat around the sock. <laughs> funky, funky sock soup? Yeah. Funky chicken yeah. sock soup. Chicken, in there. Funky it's chicken and rice well, sock soup. Well, they gonna need something to drink, huh? Yeah. <laughs> they gonna need something to drink. Come on. What you, what you got? Chicken? Go to that bathroom, get that pitcher. Fill it up. <laughs> yeah. Same color lemonade. Yeah. There you uh -uh. go. <laughs>
back wall. <laughs> That's funky. That's another funk. All right, we got to go. That's too uh, much thank funky. Thank you very much. <laughs> Post your comments you to make it strawberry funky. letter if you have any <laughs> suggestions. Uh, to Steve Harvey FM on Instagram and Facebook. Also, check out the Strawberry Letter podcast on demand. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. All right, guys, it is time for Comedy Roulette. Time for okay. these four brilliant comedians we have on the show to shine. Brilliant. I'll take brilliant. Thank you. All right, here go to categories. Excuses people give for gaining weight over the holidays. Mm. Things okay. people blurt out at Thanksgiving dinner and crazy names for gospel plays. Let's spin Ooh. the wheel and uh-uh. see what we do. <laughs> crazy names crazy. for gospel plays. Give mm-hmm. me them gospel plays right there. <laughs> <laughs> That's kind of how your Spend career it. started, Spend right, it. nephew? Mama don't smoke crack no more. All of <laughs> All right, let's spin the wheel and see what we can. How long is the wheel? Okay. (laughs) Oh. All right. Hey, look, things people blurt out at Thanksgiving dinner. Let's go. Crazy things people blurt out at Thanksgiving. Y'all ain't got no regular sized spoons in here? Damn. <laughs> All right. Come on, Junior. Things people blurt out at Thanksgiving dinner. Cough in here and see what happens. <laughs> I know that's right, Junior. Yes. <laughs> Cough in here. <laughs> Nephew, things people blurt out at Thanksgiving dinner. Uh, your prayer need to be 60 seconds or less. Don't do this today. <laughs> Don't do this today, dog. All right. Things people blurt out at Thanksgiving dinner, Steve. Who the hell ate all the dressing? Right. (laughs) (laughs) These people blurt out at Thanksgiving dinner. (laughs) So you pregnant every year? (laughs) Damn. Ooh, Junior. Ooh. (laughs) These people blurt out at Thanksgiving dinner, Steve Harvey. Hey, the game on. Come get these kids up in front of the TV. <laughs> but he's really yelling. That's what I love. That's Things real. Things people blurt out at Thanksgiving dinner. Pam this good. <laughs> Come on, Junior. <laughs> Who ragged ass car got me blocked in outside? <laughs> oh, oh. oh no, People blurt out at Thanksgiving dinner, nephew. Oh, no, where is Go ahead, dog. No, nah, because June Junior kind of got mine because mine was simple. <laughs> Who tried to view it? You got me blocked in. <laughs> <laughs> that, ladies and gentlemen, is comedy roulette from our four brilliant comedians uh, on the show. Yeah. Thank you, guys. We'll have more of the Steve Harvey Morning Show right after this. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. Going home for the holidays can be a nightmare for some people. Uh, Dealing with bickering family uh, can ruin anyone's holiday, but the real horror comes when it's time to go to sleep. Being forced Hmm. to crash in either your childhood home or a relative's oh, place God. over Thanksgiving or Christmas. I can, can't even imagine. Yeah. Why are they staying? It can definitely get <laughs> awkward, which is why it shouldn't surprise us that a new survey finds that 52% of adults say they've made up some sort of excuse specifically to avoid uncomfortable sleeping arrangements over the holidays. 52%, mm. that's over half. So, sure, if I can't and walk, you should. Yeah. If I can't walk to my kitchen Friday after Thanksgiving in my drawers, there's a problem. <laughs> hey, listen to me. Why does hmm. holidays have to be for all family? What do, what do, you, mean, <laughs> what do you mean? Steve? Yeah. Uh, you know, ain't no law say all family got to come over. All family got to be together. Most of these people in your family that you don't like anymore are married and have their own family. Well, mm-hmm. but don't you invite together? The yeah. family is coming together. Don't you invite who you want to invite over your house? But you don't like them, <laughs> and you gonna have them over? Yeah, yeah. well, you well, try to tolerate them, but that's the problem. For the occasion, for the holiday, to, and yeah, for I don't do that. Members. I don't do that, and my wife honors that request of me. Don't have nobody at my house on my limited time off that I don't like. Just do that for me. 
Is that a lot of well, what people? What about people that go over their mom's house, right? Or they go over their parents' house and they got to stay and put up with people that they don't like for the sake of their parents. Like, you know what I'm I, saying? I That's go, on y'all. I don't go nowhere where I ain't like. I think here, here's the biggest problem. Not yeah. you, but you may not like who's coming, but you dealing well, with Well, when it, they get like there, I'm me. gone. Yeah, you can leave. You can leave. You can leave. You can leave. You Like, I'm cool with the family. Mm-hmm. It's who the family bring with them. Oh, it is that they don't tell you Once about. again, my wife got a cousin, always going to bring somebody. We don't know who the hell he is. And you got to okay, watch his ass person. the whole damn night. <laughs> so you can't relax. Exactly. You no, you can't out. relax. Yeah. I don't need it. No, I need to get him to have two spoons and keep clicking them together so I know where you at. <laughs> well, when you invite them, do you say plus one or you just invite them and they bring someone? They don't let you know? No. She oh. just come over with somebody new every yeah. year. Mm. Oh, no. Or they already en route. It's kind of like you my know, aunt when she you come know. over. I'm going to bring such and such. Huh? Yeah. My aunt, my grandmother's sister, when she come over, I leave. Because ain't nobody tell me about her condition either, aunt. Ain't nobody told me that what she, she had. She, she, her, her, her memory gone. Yeah, see, I don't like that. See, I don't like that because we, she's surprised about everything. She don't remember nobody, nothing. <laughs> and so every time you nerves. speak to her, hey, ain't it? She said, who, who is that? Who is that? Who is that? <laughs> who is that? Right there. Dude, yeah. You don't want to do that. I ain't finna do that. Five hours of that? Yeah. <laughs> Here your plate. What's this on this plate? What is that? <laughs> That's turkey and dressing. Is that, you don't know. T- this is the reason we're here today. Yeah. You don't know oh that. God. Then you got to mash it up for You know what I'm saying? <laughs> like, she go to the restroom, then come back and say, hi, I get to the bathroom. You just left out of there. <laughs> Man, I'm not going to do this for five hours. I'm sorry. Uh. Yeah. I'm not doing that. I, I'll leave. You ain't got to come over. He said, that's the reason we're here today. That is the reason. Turkey, how you don't know turkey and dressing? When you see it. That's right. you, hey, man, you know who else I don't like? Who? He's stupid. I don't like them people that come over to the house. What? And take more food with them than they ate. Come on, up. Oh, oh, you yeah. sitting here? Yes. yes. She know her I'm whole family about, man, do it. Like, <laughs> hey, I'm telling you, man, like, are you for real, man? Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. Dog, you just going to cut out half a pan of dressing. You got a spatula. Yeah. You taking yeah. so much dressing out. <laughs> You're using a spatula. You're yeah. using a spatula, dog. <laughs> but you in that three, four times. But do they bring yeah. their own aluminum foil in their bag? And dog, their stuff own... be in the car. Yeah. Uh-huh. Yeah. yeah. I start hiding. To go was... kit. You know what? They yeah. got these new Ziploc <laughs> bags that's bigger than a gallon. They mm-hmm. big. More of the show right <laughs> after these jams. Damn. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. We're getting in the holiday spirit, of course, and there's a new trend for some. But, Steve, I think you've been doing this for a while at your house. Uh, Studies show that only one Christmas tree just isn't enough this year, and homeowners plan to fill their homes with multiple Christmas trees. Decor experts weighed in and agreed that the Christmas joy needs to be spread beyond just the living room. Trees belong all over your home, like in the bedroom, places like that. So so my question to you is, do you agree with this? And how many trees are you guys going to put up this year? Yeah, you could have your main tree and then you can have little trees. Marjorie's done that before. Mm-hmm. We got the main tree. We'll have like smaller trees somewhere, maybe two, three. Mm-hmm. Something like that. I've seen. It's just festive. You can. It just makes you feel good yeah. all over. It's just once it's a year, you know. But if you can't afford it, get that one damn tree and be quiet. Mm-hmm. Damn read this article. You ain't got to read every article and use it. <laughs> you didn't grow up with <laughs> <I wish laughs> <the hell. laughs> No, I wish the hell my mom would have went in there and told yeah, my daddy she tree. want two trees this right. year. The uh-huh. hell? We going to buy two damn trees for. <laughs> <laughs> Do what you can. <laughs> <laughs> We already having a hard bedroom. time getting out of this little yeah. tight-ass house. Now, nah, the hell we going to put it up? We going to set it on porch? You know, Rollo and them going to steal it if you put it on that porch because they going to think there's some boxes up under there. So we don't need to put that tree on the porch. Yeah. All right. So do, do what makes you feel happy and in the spirit. All right. We'll have more of the Steve Harvey Morning Show. We'll play a round of Would You Rather right after this. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. All right, guys, it is time now for a round of Would You Rather. Would you rather date someone with their ex's name tattooed on their chest, or would you rather date someone whose ex lives next door? Oh, that's easy. B. Okay. Yeah. Next yeah, door. You can't, I, you, I, I, you can't just have Tremaine cross your chest. I, that's all I see yeah. every day. I, no. <laughs> 
That's her that ex. Ain't gonna yeah, yeah, I can't do that one. But he's mm-hmm. you're a, you'll see him. He lives next door. You're gonna see him. I, I yeah, become hey, friends hey, with him. I'm cool. <laughs> hey, bro, really? What's Tremaine, yeah. you you see him every well, day. What I'm not gonna do is see Tremaine every time I look at her chest, though. That's not <laughs> what I'm going to do. Oh, so no. it's the location uh-huh. of the tattoo uh-huh. as well. Yeah. Okay, okay. Because I, I looks at that a lot. Yeah. <laughs> chest, chest area. <laughs> chest and butt. I can't have that there. No. <laughs> no. no. So okay. the Tremaine, your right. neighbor. <laughs> what, what, what yeah. is this? This is how it goes, yeah. Shirley. What up, okay. Tremaine? And then going out. <laughs> Does it? <laughs> and if you talk to Tremaine long enough, you'll find out what's wrong with her. Hello. <laughs> <laughs> now that's true. <laughs> All right. Would you rather live in a different fancy hotel every night with unlimited room service credit? Or would you rather live in your dream home mansion but not be able to hire any help? Oh, hell. Uh. Mm-hmm. Now this mansion just falling apart? <laughs> I'm in four seasons, dog. <laughs> Living in that big dusty ass house. <laughs> yeah. uh, no, uh, we seen when, when your staff fall back at your house. We seen how you act. Yeah. <laughs> how does he yeah. act? I, I can't find nothing. He don't yeah. know what nothing that. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, I ain't gonna do that. But I don't yeah, okay. live in a different hotel room every day. Every night. <laughs> but you have unlimited uh, room service credit every single night. Or live in your dream well, home you mansion re- with no help. Re- thank that, man. We talking about Four Seasons. We talking about uh, uh, the Mandarin. We t- boy, <laughs> the boy we talking about something. We yeah, talking about Lowe's every day, though. The new Nobu Hotel in Atlanta. <laughs> <laughs> but know. you gotta move every night. Every night. Uh-huh. Yeah. We'll just That's move. Awesome. We'll quit bringing all that luggage. Look, look, one bag, <laughs> bunch of draw. Let's move. Let's go. <laughs> yeah. I all right. A big match with no sleep. It's gonna be rough either way. I had to go on to a different hotel. All right. Hell, Last one. Would you guys? Match. Why is Steve you... out there cutting that yard on this fifty summer? <laughs> 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 He's been out there all week. Doesn't he have oh, a gardener? <laughs> he he fell sick. off of it Friday. The sun was beating him up and he was hungry. He ain't got no chef, you know. <laughs> all right, guys. That's today's round of Would You Rather. Uh, coming he up in 40... No at his gate or nothing. They just, these people just climbing over the wall, talking to him. <laughs> coming up in 49 minutes after our last break of the day. And we'll close out the show right after this. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. All right, guys, here we are. Last break of the day. Happy Thanksgiving week. It <laughs> is Happy here. Thanksgiving. Yes. 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 Can you, you believe it? Man. Cheese, baby. <laughs> I was no suggesting my closing remarks this to people. Uh-huh. That you take this time that they call Thanksgiving and you implement it in your daily regimen. Stop waiting to Thanksgiving to thank God for the year. Thank God for the blessing. Man, we ought to be doing this every single day. Every single day. Look, we don't, I don't celebrate Thanksgiving for any other reason just except just to see my family. That's mm-hmm. the only reason I have Thanksgiving. I could care less what they talking about some pilgrims and the Matterhorn and the Native Americans that rescued them. They should have left all of them on that damn boat. Shouldn't have made nair quilt. Shouldn't have planted nair row of corn. If you'd have knew this, what they was going to do to y'all, man, I'd have let they ass freeze out there on that damn rock. <laughs> really? <laughs> really, man? If you'd have knew this, what they was going to do, would you not have left them on Plymouth Rock right where they was? I mean, let's just be real. Let's just deal with the real history of what this country has done. So instead of getting into that, let's be thankful all year round. I mean, man, take some time out and put this in your everyday regimen. Don't let a day go by that you don't wake up and give God thanks. Stop laying down at bed at night without thanking God for your day. The fact that you are able to lay there and lay down and get a chance to recuperate, regenerate yourself to go out here and deal with it tomorrow, that's another reason to be thankful. 
Don't wait on Thanksgiving to be thankful. Spend some time with your family. Enjoy them. You know, there are some people that ain't here this Thanksgiving that was at the last one. You, you know, you got to think about that. You got to thank God that you still here. You still have a measure of health. You know, stop talking about what you don't have. And how about if you focus on some of the things that you do have? You know, I was uh, praying about this certain deal I wanted to happen, you know, and I was just, I kept hampering and just hammering the prayer home that I want this deal, I want this deal, I want this deal. And God reminded me of something, how he did it, I, 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 I can't share it. But he reminded me of something. He said, Steve, it's almost like he didn't, I didn't hear a voice or nothing, but it came to me in the form of Steve. Have you stopped to take a look at what I've already done for you? So while you sitting up in here with all this concern about what you don't have, have you taken a look around, young man, at what I have done for you? Have you not taken an inventory of all the blessings I've given to you? that you didn't even know you had coming your way? Do you know all the grace that I've afforded you in your life? Do you know how many times I've forgiven you? Do you have any idea of the number of times I had your back when you didn't know I was covering you? Do you know how many times I worked stuff out on your behalf so when you walked into the room, it was already done? Hmm. Do you know the rooms that are speaking your name right now and you have no idea that I'm arranging things in your life? You steady asking me for something, boy, but have you stopped to remember what all I have done for you? You tell people all the time that you one of my favorites, but do you know why you one of my favorites? Have you taken the time to go down the list of stuff I've done for you, Steve Harvey? And man, when I do that, I get real quiet. I get real quiet because God been good to me. But if you take an inventory of your life, I bet he been good to you too. But see, what you got to do is you got to stop comparing yourself to others. Just, just, just go down the list of what he done for you. Skip the car you see in the neighbor's yard every year. You don't know what that neighbor going through. Some of these people barely making payments on this stuff right here, man. These people doing stuff just to show out. You don't even know what's going on up the street. There's some people out there you see waving at you in that driveway. They ain't happy at all. You better go in there and be good with your spouse. Man, if you got a good, if you got a good husband, you better be grateful. If you got a good wife, you better be grateful. If your family still love you, you better be grateful. Man, <laughs> you got a roof over your head, you better be grateful. You eating, be grateful. It's so many things to be grateful for. God has been good to you. I'm just a reminder. Because I had to remind my stupid self sometimes. Sitting up here steady asking for more. And then forgetting to be grateful for what I got. Man, God said, you must be out your mind. Have you lost it completely? Of all the things I've taught you, you can't remember to be grateful to me. Are you kidding me, Steve Harvey? So Steve Harvey had straightened himself out. So I'm telling y'all, here's my suggestion to you. Be grateful year round. Make sure every day and every night is filled with gratitude. Now, in between there, you can send all your requests to God. Lay them at his feet. Don't ever stop asking. Don't ever stop wanting. Don't ever stop praying. But before you pray, tell God that you're grateful for all he's done. Before you ask for one thing from him. Tell him how much you should that you appreciate all he's done for you. That simple application of gratitude will change your attitude, which will then have a direct effect on your altitude. Those are my closing remarks. If you did not like those closing remarks, I hope you can't find your cranberry sauce this year. <laughs> <laughs> Have, Have a great holiday, everybody. We love you. Party contest, no purchase necessary. Void where prohibited. Participants must be legal U.S. residents at least 18 years old unless otherwise stated. For complete contest rules, visit steveharveyfm.com. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. 